Hey, man, I hear you like learning about science from quirky cartoon characters. <laughs> I gotta get that fixed, right? Tell you what, down in my description, I got a pretty quality new channel with an episode about capybaras waiting for you. Wait, you're not a cop, are you? Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. I know that this is probably gonna come as a shock to a lot of you, but a lot of people who play Dungeons & Dragons have probably played a game from the Elder Scrolls series. Come on. Come on, you know it's true. If you're one of the three people on Earth who plays D&D but is not aware of the Elder Scrolls series, I highly recommend it. Now, I'm a bit of a zoomer, so my first Elder Scrolls game was Skyrim way back in the far off year of 2011. Skyrim was actually the first mature rated game that my mom ever let me play, and even before she let me do that, I was borrowing copies from friends of mine and playing it whenever she wasn't watching too closely. While my parents thought I was off doing drugs, I was actually yeeting my Khajiit off the side of the throat of the world to see what would happen. But to be fair to them, he was definitely on drugs. However, The Elder Scrolls doesn't always spark good memories for everyone when it's brought up in casual conversation, as evidenced by today's horror story. The story I have for you today stars a player who thinks that they can just shove concepts from The Elder Scrolls into D&D, and then act surprised when declaring yourself as an all-knowing god upsets the DM. Also, I'm making the problem player a Khajiit for thematic purposes. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Enjoy. This week's story comes from Reddit user Vampire Nightmare and is titled Why I Can't Take Elder Scrolls Lore Seriously Anymore. I was gonna wait to post this, but things have developed, so I've decided to now. This is a tale of romance, tragedy, and Kim. So I'm still a relatively new DM. I've tried a couple of times to run Curse of Strahd already. My boyfriend at the time convinced me that I should run Curse of Strahd one more time, and I agreed. Though at the time, I was kind of not in a good place to start a new campaign. I was already DMing two other games as of then every week. Being the person that I am, I found myself a bit overwhelmed as I realized that I was in three games that I was DMing and wanted to drop that number down. So I stopped running the one that I wasn't having fun with. I decided that I actually enjoyed running Curse of Strahd as a game. It was honestly amazing. Players were getting into character. We were gushing in and out a game as to what we would do next. It was a blast. I decided that I wanted to expand on the module and pushed through new plot hooks, new places, and better connections to the story itself. Still have a couple of sessions left to go, so I'm not going to drop too much of it on here. I had four players in my game. Fighter, Wizard, Paladin, and Barbarita Funker. A barbarian monk artificer. It works in the game, I promise. I love this character. So time went by and they reached one of the major towns in the module. They completed a few quests, gained a few plot points, and continued the story forward. The fighter realized that they had a pretty important role in the module. Everyone did, just at different points. Theirs was first. He used this to work with the BBEG and cheat the rest of the party out of two of three important relics that they would need for the final fight, in exchange for some plus two plate mail. I know I'm probably a problem here, but the rest of the party seemed okay with it at the time. This was when the fighter started acting kinda weird. Remember, players talk in and out of character. And we'd even had some one-on-ones for players who wanted to do more, but would have taken the entire session for them to accomplish their goals. This was online, so one-on-ones were held so everyone who wanted to listen in could. It's great, since one of them changed one of the PCs completely. Out of the blue, he says that he's suspicious of a certain NPC, without any reasonable explanation and just starts causing issues in the town. So then he decides that he wants to leave the town that they're in. So I ask him what he's gonna do outside of the town. Maybe he's gonna try to make his way towards the next one that they know about. Nope. He had an NPC see him leaving and ask him where he was going. No actual explanation. Just gonna leave town. I ask him every reason I can think of as to why he's going out in the woods. And he just keeps pushing with the non-reasoning. I finally ask him if he wanted to make a new character. 
That somehow got him to come to his senses and that he wants to keep playing this one and decides to come back to the town with the rest of the party. So, a bit weird, but we keep going. So the party eventually meets a wizard that's kind of a jerk, and I had left clues in other places of the map implying the guy's strength. Signs of a psychic scream in one room, control over a bunch of undead in another, etc, etc. So they talk to the guy while Fighter tells me that he's walking up to him. They're letting him monologue a bit when the fighter says, I would like to attack him. I tell him that, okay, we're gonna roll initiative. But don't I get a surprise round? No, you're standing right in front of him and pulling out your weapon in front of you. I told you he's watching all of you. But I was trying for a surprise. But you didn't roll for anything that would imply surprise and you didn't ask me for anything. You still won the initiative, so you're still gonna be going first. Oh boy, oh boy, this guy. You know, when I started reading this story, I was thinking to myself, The, the Drake Mobile! There's only one creature on Earth that would cross me like this. Larry, grab my harpoon. We're going fishing. So we're out here because you think surf shark vandalized your car and not because you're a massive jerk with tons of people who hate you? Correct. And not only that, you, despite having done two sponsors for them in the past, think that Surfshark VPN is not only the best in online threat protection, but is also a literal shark. Shh, we don't want it to know that we're looking for it. Not only is Surfshark the apex predator of the seas, but it's also good at covering its tracks. I saw it using public Wi-Fi at the coffee shop and tried to hack its online data, but it was all encrypted. I tried to see what files it was downloading and same thing. The bastard even got a better deal when it was online shopping, just to rub my face in it. Okay, genius, if Surfshark is so good at protecting itself online, how do you know it's here? It wasn't easy. Every time I tried to use geotracking to figure out where it was, it would use Surfshark to bounce its location all over the planet. I even tried to block his access to his favorite streaming platforms to mess with him, and he was able to get around me like it was nothing. But then I got smart. He's a shark, right? And where do all sharks live? Yes, I've deduced that he is somewhere in the ocean. Wow. Every day you continue to surprise me with just how stupid you really are. Ah, there he is! Larry, get him! Ah! Oh, oh, I'm gonna... Hey, wait a minute! Drake! There's something down here! You're not gonna believe it! What is it? Talk to me, little buddy! It's... a promo code! Let me see... Anyone who uses the link in the description and the promo code DRAKE gets an extra three months of Surfshark protection for free? I want that deal! I'm coming for you, Surfshark! Jackass. Ha! See, Larry? I told you there'd be sharks down here. <laughs> he pitches a bit of a fit about not getting his surprise round, but doesn't ask to take back his attack or anything at least, so the level 5 party rolled initiative. With full permission to be evil to the party, one psychic scream later, they're all down or in rough shape. Except Barbara Fonker, who wasn't in visual line of the Archmage to be level 9 shotted. Fighter was whining to me about that one later on. I held my ground on it and the party had some fun. I found some journals that were in a language none of them actually knew, and we continued the plot forward from there. Fighter starts saying that he wants to do things in character that should be discussed over a 1v1, and I bring that up. He says that he doesn't want to do that. Fair. So I ask for footnotes as to what he wants from it. He gives them, and I acquiesce to include it in the storyline. He also says that he wants to start playing Vampire the Masquerade since he likes things that he sees from the system, and that I should help him find a group or run a session of my own. I agree and wind up doing all the legwork to find an amazing storyteller willing to take on new players to the game, and I make a salubri who's pretending to be a Toreador. Paladin goes MIA for a while. We're concerned but assume that it's a game day thing or something. It was. So we have the session anyway, since it's not too focused on his character. Wizard was a friend who asks if they can listen in. I agree, since I've been enjoying running this game a lot, and if other people want to hear, awesome. Enter Warlock. 
When they join in, I offer to let them play the NPC wizard, not the same one that screamed, and they agree. They have fun and the fighter suggests that I should let Warlock join in as a player completely, to which I agree. Paladin returns and we catch up on some stuff as to what's going on and the game goes on. The players make it to the other side of the map where there's a lot of stuff going on. They fight off the enemies and the players decide to set up camp. It's about an hour before our session ends, so we get ready with some RP stuff when the fighter suddenly speaks over me and says, And that is where we are going to end the session. An awkward kind of pause. What? I ask him why, and he says that he's gonna go to bed. We're all still wanting to play, so I ask him if it's okay if we can RP still. Oh yes, that's fine. Kinda sucks to keep going without all the players present, but whatever. Oh hell no, there is only one person who dismisses everyone else, and that is the DM. You can say, hey guys, I'm feeling really tired. I'm going to head to bed, have fun. But just hijacking the DM's position of authority is such a slap in the face to everyone involved, especially the DM. Here's why this pisses me off so much. There's a key difference between the DM and a player saying that it's time to end the session. When the DM says, and that's where we're gonna end tonight's session, that translates to, all right, there's literally nothing else for you to do. See you next week when I got more stuff planned. Hope you had fun. When a player says the same thing, it translates to, Hey, listen, I don't know if you had any more stuff planned for this session, or if any of the other players want to continue playing, but I don't care. All of you are going to stop having fun and wait for me to decide that I want to play again. It's beyond selfish and egotistical, and communicates a clear message that you think that the game revolves around you. It has the same selfish energy as a TikToker setting up their phone camera in a public gym and getting pissed when someone walks by and ruins their shot. And I already think those people deserve a 45 pound dumbbell to the back of the head. God, nothing has made me despise egotistical content creators more than becoming an egotistical content creator. Whoops, took that one off the rails for a second there. Okay, so the reality is that the DM not immediately shutting this down is telling for why it's able to happen at all. Throughout the story, the DM keeps kowtowing to this guy over and over and over again and that only leads to him becoming more absurd. The DM asking the fighter permission to continue roleplaying is only affirming in the fighter's self-absorbed brain that he is the one calling all the shots for everyone. If you get a player trying to assert their dominance over everyone else like this, first, why are you friends with that person? And second, don't try to placate them by giving in to their delusions, it's only gonna make things worse. He left the call and I saw him playing a game for some time after the session. I had some role play, well, more like letting the other party settle down and finish out the day. I find out where they wanna pick the game back up. To anyone wondering, he insisted that he wanted to get to bed early because it was daylight savings and he didn't want to lose sleep, except the clocks went forward the night before. He then posts online that he wants to end the game an hour earlier than we've been doing for months. Next session, I have things start up again. They're in a private sanctum, but despite this, they hear something whispering to each of them. They peer their heads out of the sanctum and see things that seem to be from the past, but not the past that they remembered. All the party has a good time each, until the fighter's turn came. I did the same to his character, who insisted on not long resting, mind you. He chooses to ignore me. He insists that despite people really only looking a bit worried by what they saw out there and not hurt, he suddenly knew that it was some evil entity out there. The BBEG was out there physically talking to him at some point. That got him out of the sanctum. He asked him this and that. When the fighter decided to go inside, I still wanted to describe something for it. You know, get them all in character and I had written a lot. It was more to describe what I had written down, and he didn't have to react to it. And if you'd look up, you'd see, I do not look up. I do not look at it. Okay, but just, my character is too smart for this. I am not looking up at it and falling for the tricks of this place. 
I later out of game told him that I just wanted to describe it since I had had something for everyone written. That he didn't have to react in character to it and could have just ignored it in character. He told me that I was disrespecting his agency as a player and that I shouldn't have done any of that and just let him play his character how he wanted. Okay, if I was coming off as pushy about it, that's fair enough to say. The party goes back to one of the towns, the closest one to where they were at, and the fighter starts messaging me about his character again. About how he's so excited since his character figured out how this place works, and the dark powers gain. How fighter has achieved Kim. Not kidding, he said fighter achieved Kim. To anyone who doesn't know, it's an Elder Scrolls Lord thing of enlightenment slash meta-knowledge. At least, that's what he told me it was. Okay, so this is actually kind of an important concept to understand just how shitty the fighter is being right now. Kim in the Elder Scrolls is basically when a character realizes that they are in a video game and gains access to console commands. It's weird and muddy and it's got a ton of meta humor behind it, but that's basically all you need to know to grasp what it is. The fighter has basically said, LOL, now I am the second DM. That is a new level of Tom f***ery. I told him that I didn't think that fit my game's theme. That his character didn't have that kind of information to conclude the answer and that even the BBEG doesn't have that kind of info. He agrees to what I've said. Not. He seems to agree and then tried to RP having Kim with the wizard in the very next session. Wizard says in character that it doesn't make sense and he replies with, Oh, you just don't get it. So a few more sessions later, they're fighting a Dullahan on a bridge. Despite the fact that I've emphasized that there is very little room on the edge of the bridge after he's made five attacks, the fighter decides to try to pull Volt from a standing position over the Dullahan and land 10 feet away on the other side of the creature. I tell him that it's not really possible and he has a bit of a hissy fit about it. Let me emphasize. From a standing still position after making five attacks, he wanted to pull vault over the Dullahan with his glaive to land 10 feet away on the other side of it and have it not count as an action. So he whines that he has to get within range of the Dullahan's attacks and decides to get close before ending his turn. The Dullahan uses its last legendary action to strike the fighter. Natural 20. Dullahan have a unique ability that if they crit on the attack, then the player has to make a constitution saving throw. If they fail, then their head gets cut off. He makes his save. Natural 1. The fighter rage quit. He starts messaging me about this and about the party, telling me about how everyone else sucks and he just wasn't enjoying the game's direction anyway. He also tried to say that his vampire knew my Toriador was actually a salubri, and now he was gonna eat her despite having no in-game reason to suspect her. He also said that the Archfey the party befriended slash saved the life of is definitely gonna betray the party and they're just gonna TPK in the next session without him anyways. Anyway, the fighter and I broke up for more than just this. I have the screenshots that I'll be attaching to this post for anyone who wants to see the tantrum. Wizard and I have started a thing. Thanks for reading. And a curious souls, if you want more info on things like the Archfey or anything, please ask questions in the comments and I'll answer best I can. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to spoil things for other players. Wait, 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 that was a lot of information crammed into the final paragraph. Fighter was your boyfriend, OP? Oh god, that explains so much. When you start throwing in the extra complications that an actual relationship adds to D&D, &D, it's not hard to see how the fighter, being the narcissist that he was, was able to leverage that to get away with his bullshit. Now, OP mentioned having some receipts for a certain tantrum that the fighter had, and you all know me, I love some good quality chisme. So how about we go ahead and take a look at those before we end the video, shall we? Okay, so before I start reading, I'll clear up a little thing that might be kind of confusing. OP refers to Fighter as Kim in these screenshots, and his character as Fighter. So when you hear me say Fighter, that's when someone is referring to the actual character. Okay, let's get this train rolling. Kim. Oh boy, one day he will get it. 
Fighter has said that he knows the reality over the situation everyone is truly in. The Dark Powers now know that Fighter isn't just some plaything. Perhaps this means that he has true control over himself because he is truly self-aware. It also means his presence, dead or alive, will disturb the stability of the domains of the Dread. The reason of clerics and paladins, angels and devils, distort Ravenloft is because they're God's powers to understand the real reason behind the existence of the domain. Fighter has achieved Kim. He truly recognizes his own purpose. He realizes that this is a game of cosmic proportions and thus understands him being real means he truly understands his condition. We are all souls in a game. And him understanding that means that he has no fear and is not controlled by the machinations behind the mists. If you want to talk about this, I am up for the bedchamber chat. This is a real exciting meta concept that a character has realized. Kim, part of the games I like are the creative exercises that revolve around solving problems using individual skill sets. That game is great and all, but it's not the VTM experience that I enjoy. I love story, but I also love the impact in the world as a whole. The players in this game, save the wizard, are just off-putting. Like, what is the point of playing a character for months for people to poke and prod about their death in this awesome story? It just felt more and more meaningless to play each week. It's not like Paladin takes it seriously or cares. And Barberifonker is awesome, but it doesn't really get the meaning of the themes of the game itself and its intrigue. Wizard is wonderful, and he plays his character as his character in-game. I don't really like the addition of Warlock. It sort of felt weird coming into the game so late, but eh, it's whatever now. I do not enjoy the direction the game is going. Thus, I will not be playing in it. Simple as that. Kim. Fighter has been a blast to play. But yeah, as is all things, the people involved end up ruining the fun. Silent resentment, constant jokes and prodding, which I do too, but I actually stop when asked. Lack of engagement and lack of stability. The character was a wonderful thought exercise. If there was an epitaph on his grave, a nobody living a simple life and deciding to make a name for himself through fighting and study. Being hard-working and honest with everyone he is around. Being whisked away in a trial for his life and soul. And being given extraordinarily unfair odds. His friends are sponsored by liches, angels, and dragons. He was just a man in his first life, same then as now. But for all ordinary men, they die. And in the case he expected the most died a truly unexpected one. That is, Fighter, the one who suffers, but will always try his best for those around him. Whether they come to recognize this is up to you. You are Fighter now. You are his legacy. You decide if all of his work meant something or will become forgotten. I won't play the character again unless convinced to, but I doubt the Dark Powers will let him back. Because after all, he has become aware of the world that he was in and its purpose. Kim. Wish I could have pole vaulted. It's a real technique used by Greek warriors who mastered their spears. TM. I mean, wasn't sure on the ruling of pole vaulting at that moment, and you had literally used six attacks already that turn. Kim. Eh, five attacks. Action search. TM. Ah, five attacks. Fair, lol. Kim. And it sure wasn't free. I had used haste. DM. True. Still, the hasted action was already used, too. Kim. What ifs? I should have just casted something with my spells. Oh, wait. Ah, I should use my holy power. I won't be playing the character unless convinced to. Bruh, you know what that means? Oh, please, please, please tell me how much you like my dumbass Kim idea and beg me to come back, please. My fragile sense of self-worth is hanging in the balance. Dude, imagine being so f***ing full of yourself that the first thing you do after your character dies is message the DM and lay out a step-by-step -step guide on how to ensure that their world continues to revolve around you. 
I get falling in love with what you think is a unique character concept, but the complete lack of self-awareness here is beyond baffling. Which is hilarious because the whole point of achieving Kim is that you become so self-aware that you break reality. Is there such thing as anti-Kim? Because that's exactly what the fighter is demonstrating here. Sure, your character might have figured out that he was a fictional character, but you're about to find out a much more realistic truth. That truth being that you are now single. How's that for Kim? So, this would be where I would transition into Gallery of the Drake, but uh, I got nothing for you. I finally ran out of artwork in my backlog. I'm super grateful that I've been able to do, no exaggeration, more than 90 videos straight of featuring fan art submitted by the community. You guys are super awesome and super talented, and it's insane that so many different people created artwork for a dumb old D&D channel. I really treasure all you guys. I'm still going to continue Gallery of the Drake, don't worry, but now that I've gotten through all of it, it probably won't be an every week kind of deal like it has been. If you'd like to submit your fan art to be featured on the channel, be sure to send it to the email in my about section. It's always awesome to receive new stuff from you guys. And on that note, I think that's a good place to wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Dream.